Well, it's a lovely morning here in the west of Ireland. It really is. Although there's a, a mighty wind on the way, apparently. So, it could prove to be a little bit stormy later on, I think. Sort of a misly little, little, um, not quite a rain, uh, not a drizzle, but a mizzle, which is a, a soft rain, I suppose it's called. So it's very pleasant and it's getting cooler, which is also lovely. That suits me. I'm a bit of a cool babe. I like to have sort of cool air, which is very breathable. I actually like the autumn and the winter and the early spring. It's lovely. Very still. Now I wanted just to say a few quick words about the website because it can be difficult to load the website. So I would ask you to be really, really patient. Now one of the reasons why it's so difficult to load the website is because I use the website primarily as a depository for my photographs. Um, not all my photographs, but there's probably about 20,000 plus photographs on that website. And they're all high quality, which means that they take up a lot of space. So unlike other websites that have, I suppose, an average amount of blogs and photographs on them, which in comparison to mine, usually quite small, the Bealtaine Cottage website requires patience when you're loading it up. So I suggest that before you try to um, use the website properly, just let it load for a few minutes and then come back to it. And then when you're scrolling it again, take a little bit more time. It's a little bit like Bealtaine Cottage itself. It's not about rushing, it's about taking time. I try not to rush and I probably get more done because I don't rush. Some bees around the nasturtiums there. But I have noticed over the past wee while that um, people are saying that it's difficult to order a book or whatever because of the, the slowness of the website. Well, all I can ask is your patience. And I think with a little bit of patience, the task will be done all the sooner. This tree's got mighty, absolutely mighty. Now, it's going to come in for a little bit of a prune this winter um, because it's getting so huge. And with the trees around the cottage, my intention is to try to keep a balance going. So the trees directly around the cottage, um, I want all of them to grow in a sort of a unison. And... Uh, that means just keeping them all in check but just the ones literally on the edge of the driveway here at the front of the cottage but it's interesting because as I walk around these are the things that I'm thinking of there's a piece of my beautiful rose quartz quite a lot of that in the land here and I was reading the other day that that can be a sign that there's gold. <laughs> it 
So I shouldn't really be saying this because I don't want this land all dug up for gold. Isn't that sad? It's sad really how something like gold has become a commodity. I suppose it's the rarity, the rarity of it and it's also the, I don't know, People regard gold as something precious. And for most people, I suppose it is. I don't like gold. I don't wear gold. I've never worn gold. I love silver. Gold I find quite blingy. It's probably the way it's been... Um, been sold, you know, over the over the generations, and especially since about the nineteen forties or fifties, it's become like um, almost like a high street commodity. You know, I remember there was a jeweller, um, a guy who owned a series of jewellery shops in the UK years ago. Can't remember his name now, but. Uh, I think he stated that as part of his business model, he wanted to make gold really accessible for everyone. <laughs> I think that, that that put the final nail in the coffin of gold for me. <laughs> and the, I remember the high street shops, they were, they were filled with really kind, you know, these very thin gold um, necklaces and bracelets and so on. And, People couldn't buy one piece of gold. They had to have about ten pieces of gold on them. <laughs> so it just became, I don't know. Not my style, just. I prefer to have one or two chunky pieces of silver. I think silver just suits my skin tones better as well. And I don't like diamonds either. Um, I don't have any diamonds. <laughs> that sounds so casual, doesn't it? I don't have any diamonds, you know. <laughs> As though there's something that you can buy at the supermarket. But no, diamonds have never appealed to me either. So I'm not a gold and diamond kind of gal. Just looking down into the fairy wood again. And Jack has a totally different demeanour on him this morning now. He's just trotting around. But then I think when we were looking down into the fairy wood last night, it was at that time, that sort of time of dusk, when... There's just a totally different energy happening. This is where I was doing the chop and drop last night. Oh, that sounds like a blackbird. Of course, the birds come up to the orchard here for the apples. I get so much pleasure just from listening to the birds, having the birds around me. More pleasure than harvesting lots of apples. I take what I need. That's something that we're not very good at as a species. Taking what we need. We're inclined to take a lot more than what we need. I think all of us are guilty of that. I mean, I've done that in the past. Gone out harvesting, you know, or foraging. And taken more than what I've needed and then had a, a surplus and sometimes a waste. Although 
I would put it out on the land for the birds and the small creatures, so it was never wasted. But in terms of foraging, I probably foraged too much, took, took too much. But I think that we, as a species, are going through, or entering into at least, a period of great change when we view things differently. When we adapt to a new energy. That's actually happening. It's happening right now. There's, um... There's a whole new way of looking at the world, which has happened. And at the same time has been welcomed and embraced. For example, what's happened with this pandemic has changed a lot of people's value systems, or at least tweaked them. And I was listening to the radio yesterday, and um, this was Irish radio, and there was people being interviewed about, you know, the high street and shopping. And one person, one woman said something that resonated with me. She said, there's no joy in shopping anymore. Which is very interesting, because I think since, since about the 1970s we've been primed to see shopping as um, not just a consumer exercise, but part of our personal downtime. You know, let's go shopping. Whereas I think before that time it was seen as a necessity. Well, you'd go shopping on a weekly basis or even a daily basis. But when it came to, you know, clothing or, um, you know, uh, retail, retail goods that weren't food, that was limited to maybe once a month or sometimes in the case of people who lived in the west of Ireland once a year where you'd go up to Dublin you know you'd have a grand day out because you wanted to buy a coat or you wanted to buy a special pair of shoes or a handbag so all that's changing you see this 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 um, let's go shopping um, as a form of therapy, you know, retail therapy it's been called. So things are slowing down. People are re-evaluating their lives. I mean, all this is good. All this is good. In the short term, it might seem a little bit um, disheartening. For some people, well, for all of us, I suppose, in one way or another. But it can only be a good thing in the long term. Because to find therapy in consuming, it's a bit like the jeweller who opened all those cheap gold shops in the UK years and years ago, may have been during the 80s, I think. Of course, the 80s were a time when the whole idea of self was promoted and uh, you know, everybody had to own their own house, everybody had to, um, you, know, the, you know, the kind of shoulder pad experience where everyone had to be bigger and better and um, we had the Dallas and the dynasty and they consume, consume, consume and that was all part of that era and it was quite a deliberate 
It's quite a deliberate um, exercise by the Western, go- by all the Western governments, you know, to turn people into consumers. Well, through no um, plan of their own, what's happened since February is turning people away from the consuming. We live in interesting times. And certainly, you know, with the stillness here at Bealtaine Cottage, it's like a message, it's like a signal that the earth has been allowed to breathe. And that people are beginning to see her and regard her and reset their whole value systems. And what was of value six months ago is no longer of such value. But it is interesting to hear people say, I no longer enjoy shopping. So, just a reminder again about the website. Please have patience with it. It's not your common or garden website. It is a place where I've been storing photographs and blogs for over 10 years. And it's a massive, massive website. So give it a wee bit more time to download and be a little bit more patient if you want to look at something specific on the website. And like I say, there's over 20,000 photographs. There's blogs going back to, I think, 2010, 2011, something like that. Um, Because initially what happened was... I think I had blogs going back to, oh, well, definitely 2010. And the website grew and grew. And at that point, it was a free website for me. And in order to keep it a free website, I had to delete a lot of the photographs and a lot of the blogs. So that's what I did until I got to the point where I could afford to... Um, fund um, the website into uh, it was like an unlimited upload I could have which is um, it's it's 300 euros a year I mean for me it's well worth it to keep all that information up there on the net and also to keep advertising away from it because I loathe advertising I don't want anything to detract from what is up there So, like I say, please be patient. Take your time. Allow it to load um, before you go trying to order books and stuff like that. It will need to load properly. Blessings to you all. I think I'm going to go and have a second cup of coffee. And then I'm going to get my togs on, that's my old gear, and head off down into the woodland. See if I can't open a few paths down there. (laughs) Blessings to you all and have a lovely day.